All right, so here it says researchers conducted a telephone survey of 427 adults living in a large city. The adults were asked whether they plan to purchase a smartwatch in the next year. Table below shows the responses categorized by the region and the city in which the residents live. All right, so it looks like we have it broken down into northeast, south, and west. And here are the yeses, and here are the noes. So the question is, which of the following graphical displays is the most appropriate for comparing the proportions of those surveyed who plan to purchase a smart watch in the four regions? Okay, so um, we essentially want to figure out what percent of the north would purchase a smartwatch, what percent of the east would purchase a smartwatch, what percent of the south, and what percent of the west. So um, essentially, you're going to basically look within each row and calculate the proportion of the total. So like if we had, if we totaled this up, we have another row, another column here. So that would be 42, 52, probably 108, and then um, you want to basically see what proportion of 62 would be yes. So it'd be like 24 out of 62 would be yes. So yes. And then 38 out of um, 62 would be no. We're so just doing the first row. There's an example. So. 24 divided by 62, about 0.38. 38 divided by 62, about 62. So this would be point, say 0.39, and that's 0.61. So um, you so a good graph to make would be a side would be um, it's going to be called a segment and bar chart. It's basically like a bar chart broken up into um into like different uh different parts. So it's like side since different like side by side bars. So what I mean by that is if we'll have if focusing only on the north, say these are the north respondents, and on the scale you would have you know your proportion, let's say 0.5 is there. So just a quick example. So you would draw the, the yes bar like up to maybe here, about 0.4, and the no bar to you know a little bit above. Maybe you can make a key, you know, yes, sort of thing. And you would do that um, for the east, south, west, and so forth. You have two of these side by side, seeing each of them by doing that same calculation, dividing this by that and that by that, so you can find the yeses and nos, and so forth. So your answer is going to be C. All right, so scientists recorded the duration of the eruptions of the Old Faithful Geyser in Yellowstone National Park that occurred during a one-month period. The histogram below shows the distribution of the duration and second of the eruptions. Okay, so based on the histogram, which of the following is the best description of the distribution? Okay, so this is definitely not normal. It looks like it'll be like um, double peak, twin peak, or bimodal, something like this. So um, let's see what's, let's see what would best work. So distribution is uniform, not uniform. So we can stop right there. Uniform would be if it was like, so it was like an even graph, let's say, um, like, like a rectangle. So that could be an example of a uniform graph. Um, skew to the left, centered about 125, has a range of most 250. So skew to the left would be that the graph would do something like this. Tail would go to the left. And it's not definitely not skewed to the left. Skewed to the right, centered at about 260. So it's not going to be skewed to the right, skewed to the right, it's just going the other way. It's like that. Two clusters, okay, that makes sense, as a range of the most 200. So the range would be going from 75 to 325, and that would be, the range would be 250. 50. So it's this, the range is not right. And it doesn't have outliers below 75 and above. So 
it's not that. And um, so it's going to be E by elimination, but let's just go break it down. So two clusters, one cluster is centered at 125. That's about there. Another one centered at about 260. So maybe about there. And the range of at most 250, and that's the range we got from previous parts. So that would be answer to E. Right, events, D and E are independent. The probability of D equals 0. 0.6, and the probability of D and E is 0. 0.18, which the following is true. Okay, so if two events are independent, that means the probability of one happening is not going to change or affect the probability of the other happening. So if you were to find the probability of D and E, that's just the probability of D times the probability of E. And that's what that's what's over there, 0.18. Probability of D is 0.6. So to find the probability of E, you would just divide 0.18 by 0.6. So the probability of E would be 0.3. Now, um, so we know it's not going to be A or A or B. Now let's look at C, D or E. What does that mean? So, um, Different ways to, for this to work. So, let's, so probability of D or E, so probability of D, and that's like this, this union E, would be equal to I mean the probability of D plus the probability of E minus the probability of D and E. So that'd be 0.6 plus 0.3 minus 0 0.18, 0 0.98, 0 0.72. Answer to D. I mean, another way to think of this is maybe maybe a visual be helped. Like, why does that work? Like, let's think of this um, a Venn diagram. You have D and E. The probability of D we know is 0 0.6. The probability of E is 0 0.18. And the probability of D and E would be here, would be in the middle. And we know that's point. Oh, sorry, this is 0.3. Oops. That's probability of E is 0 0.3, and we know that's 0 0.18. So to find the probability of D or E, you would just add 0 0.6 plus 0 0.3 minus this, because this is going to, um, you don't want to double count. If you added 0 0.6 to 0 0.3, you'd be double counting here. This is another visual way to see that. Number four. Researchers used two footballs of the same size to examine the effect of helium on kicking distance. One football was filled with air and the other was filled with helium. Seven people participated in the study. Each person kicked the football filled with air and the football filled with kicking distances in the yards were recorded. Football that was kicked first was first was determined by the flip of a fair coin. And the people did not know which football was filled with air and which was filled with helium. What type of study was conducted by the researchers of the following? And of the following, which is the appropriate T interval for inference. Okay, so we have 11 people in the study and each person kicks the football with air and with helium. So each person basically does, I guess you can think of it as two treatments, like an experiment, they get exposed, they try both. So um, when you have that, you're asking the matched pair design. Matched pair design is when each individual gets, you know, gets both treatments, maybe in a different order, depending on the, depending on the experiment. In this case, it would be, you know, kicking the football with air and the one with helium. And yeah, so see how it says that the, the order was determined by flip of the coin. So um, for here, we would know it would be at least, we wouldn't be A or B. Wouldn't be E. 
And now in, in C, it's saying between means for independent samples. It wouldn't be independent samples because each person gets exposed to both. So each person, you know, um, like, how would you, let me, let's try this, let's try to say person one takes the helium one some distance and the air one one distance. And then we measure, we write down the data here. Um, so we can argue that, you know, well, a, the person, you know, it's the same. It's the same person kicks both of these, and we're measuring the differences with each within each in each person. A person two would be there. A person three would be there, and then we measure like the differences. Um, they're not going to be independent because you know you can argue that a person who kicks a helium football far, but also kick a, an air football far. So you know you're not you're going to have you're not going to be um you're going to have some effect on yourself, so to speak. So the answer would be C. Very survey of a random sample of 1,045 adults found that 60% did not have a random sample. The hypothesis test will be used to determine whether the data provided convincing statistical evidence that more than 50% of all young adults do not have a random sample. Which of the following is a test that's the appropriate test? Okay, so um, here we're gonna have essentially our sample proportion. So we have our p hat minus our you know null hypothesis proportion or our p naught over the square root of the no hypothesis proportion PO minus one minus or times one minus PO over the sample size. P hat is the 0.6. That's what the sample we got. We um we're gonna you know say that that we're gonna believe that 50% is a true proportion, so that'll be PO, and then that'll be doubt, so then 0.5 here and one minus 0.5 here as well. And a thousand and five. And so then we'll go for the one that might be C. All right, airline recorded the number of on time arrivals for a sample of a thousand flights each day. The box plot below summarizes and recorded the summarizes the recorded data for one year. Based on the box plot, which of the following statements must be true? The range of the number of on-time arrivals is greater than 90. Well, the range is for the distance from the smallest to the largest. This is 72. And that's 94. So the range is, you know, the only the range is 22. So that's wrong. The interquartile range is the distance from Q1 or from here to Q3. That would be 2, 4, 6, that'd be 76. And this is at 80. So the IQR is, is 76 to 80 or 4. So that's wrong. The number of days that had at least 80 on time arrivals is greater than the number of days that had most 76 on time, 76 on time arrivals. So the number of days that had more than 80 on time arrivals is, is gonna basically be the number of data points in here. That's 25% of all the data, which happens just to be 25. And the number of days that at most 76 it would be this length here, would be that value. And that's another, that's exactly 25% as well. And that's 25, so they're actually equal. Remember, a box plot that breaks it into four quartiles, the first 25%, the second 25%, the third 25%, the fourth. Um, even though there are going to be different lengths, the number of data points in, within each quartile is the same. So it's not going to be C. The number of days that had is from 76 to 80 on time arrivals, so you get to the number of days that had the most 76 on time arrivals. 
So the number of days that has 76 to 80 on time arrivals will be 50. So that's 50% of the data. And the number of days that had at most 76 is only right here is 25. So it's not equal, so it's not D. So we know it's gonna be E. Let's look at that, let's go over it. The difference between the median and lower quartile for a number of on-time arrivals is less than two. So the median is right here. So it's, this is gonna be, um, that's 78. And the first quartile looks like that's 76. So 76 to 78 is two, but we know that from here to here, it's gonna be less than two. And that's what the difference between the median and Q1.